My dearly beloved in Christ, I would like to begin this morning by rereading the first few lines of today's epistle of St. Peter. And St. Peter is speaking to the early Christians about the importance of charity and unity. And indeed, the early Christians were known, well known, for their unity and their charity. How the non-Catholics, the pagans, would look at the Christians and say, see how they love one another, because there was such a bond uniting them. And St. Paul says, be all like, St. Peter, be all like-minded in prayer, compassionate lovers of the brethren, merciful, reserved, humble, not rendering evil for, for evil or abuse for abuse, but contrarywise, blessing. For unto this were you called, that you might inherit a blessing. And would it not be beautiful, would it not be wonderful if we had that bond, among ourselves, in our homes, among the members of the family, in the parish, among our fellow Catholics, a bond uniting us that transcends the individual differences of opinions, likes and dislikes, because after all, we all are united in the same mystical body of Christ. St. Paul in particular often spoke of the mystical body, how Christ is the head and we are the members. And because we are all members of the same body, we should be closely united with one another. Our Lord said, I am the vine, you are the branches. And these bonds of charity are strengthened every time we receive devoutly our Lord in Holy Communion. We are drawn closer to Christ, the head of the mystical body, and closer to one another in charity. We look at our Lord in the Blessed Sacrament, and how can we foster a greater devotion to our Lord there present? We can do so by calling to mind the image of the Sacred Heart of Jesus. To view our Lord, you might say to look at the tabernacle and to see there, in our mind at least, the Sacred Heart throbbing with love for us. And when our Lord appeared to St. Margaret Mary in the 1670s, he showed her his heart with the wound in the side, surrounded by a crown of thorns, with the flames coming out of the heart, and these flames surmounted by the cross. All symbols of love. How our Lord suffered so much, symbolized by the wound and the crown of thorns and the cross. All that he suffered for love of us. And the vehemence of his love for us, symbolized by the flames coming out from the heart. Let us be sure to honor and reverence the Sacred Heart of Jesus. And remember what St. Louis Marie de Montfort says about devotions. We all have greater or lesser devotions to this saint or that saint. We are all drawn towards a particular saint or saints. But as St. Louis Marie de Montfort says, the primary devotions are to Jesus and Mary. He said, these are like what gold and silver are compared to the other metals. And so we should especially foster in our hearts and in our devotional practices, devotion to, love for, the Sacred Heart of Jesus and the Immaculate Heart of Mary. And this devotion to our Lord of the Sacred Heart was not known during the first 17 centuries of the church, or at least it was not widely practiced, it was not publicly practiced, until after our Lord's apparitions to St. Margaret Mary in Paris-Limonial, France, as I said, in the 1670s and 1680s. And it took a while for this devotion to take root and to be publicly approved. In fact, it wasn't until 1765 that Pope Clement XIII approved the devotion, established a feast in honor of the Sacred Heart, and then from there it began to grow and spread. In the early part of this century, it was either 1900, 1901, 
maybe 1899, Pope Leo XIII consecrated the human race to the Sacred Heart. And we ourselves ought to renew frequently our consecration and remind ourselves of what this devotion means, what consecration to the Sacred Heart of Jesus means. It means we choose our Lord for our King. We pledge to obey the commandments and thereby prove our love for our Lord. Because after all, that is what the devotion of the Sacred Heart is all about, love. Our Lord revealed his heart. In fact, let me quote to you from the words of St. Margaret Mary. He made me see that it was the great desire he had of being loved by men and of withdrawing them from the road to perdition that induced him to conceive this plan of making his heart known to men with all the treasures of love, of mercy, of grace, of sanctification, and of salvation. In other words, our Lord revealed this devotion, this image of his heart to tell us, to remind us of his love for us. He said to St. Margaret Mary, Behold this heart which has loved men so much and is so little loved in return. Our Lord craves our love. And that is what devotion to the Sacred Heart is all about. Loving our Lord, returning Him love for all this love that He has for us. But there's a second element, very important, and that is making up to our Lord, making atonement, making reparation for those who do not love Him and do not serve Him. How our Lord is wounded, even by so many who profess to love Him, but do not obey His commandments. Here are some words of our Lord to St. Margaret Mary. Behold this heart which has so loved men that it has spared nothing, even to exhausting and consuming itself, in order to testify its love. In return, I receive from the greater part only ingratitude by their irreverences and sacrileges and by the coldness and contempt they have for me in this sacrament of love. And he went on to say to St. Margaret Mary, My daughter, I come into the heart I have given you in order that through your fervor you may atone for the offenses which I have received from lukewarm and slothful hearts which dishonor me in the Blessed Sacrament. So by our love for our Lord, our reverence, we can make up to Him. We can console Him for those who do not love Him and do not serve Him. Now I mentioned earlier the consecration to the Sacred Heart. No doubt you have all done this. I hope you have consecrated your homes. In fact, I hope that your home is enthroned to the Sacred Heart of Jesus. But this consecration of ourselves, of our families, our parish, is something we should often renew. Reminding ourselves, I have given myself to our Lord. I have chosen Jesus to be my King. Let us listen in this regard to some words of Pope Pius XI in an encyclical he wrote, Miserentissimus Redemptor, of 1928. He said, Assuredly, among those things which properly pertain to the worship of the most sacred heart, a special place must be given to that consecration, whereby we devote ourselves and all things that are ours to the divine heart of Jesus, acknowledging that we have received all things from the everlasting love of God. So we make that consecration, but also again we strive to atone for the offenses. And how much God is offended, especially today, where the majority of men, as it were, shake their fist in God's face and repeat the words of Lucifer, I will not serve. People would rather serve themselves, their own passions, their own lusts, their own likes, their own will, rather than to submit to the sweet yoke of Jesus Christ. 
The Pope goes on, Since in the last century and in this present century things have come to such a pass that by the machinations of wicked men the sovereignty of Christ our Lord has been denied and war is publicly waged against the Church by passing laws and promoting plebiscites repugnant to divine and natural law, nay more by holding assemblies of them that cry out, we will not have this man to reign over us. From the aforesaid consecration there burst forth over against them in keenest opposition the voice of all the clients of the most sacred heart, as it were one voice, to vindicate his glory and to assert his rights. Christ must reign. Thy kingdom come. And these words of the Pope, Pope Pius XI, struck me as I was reading them, especially given the tragic decision of the Supreme Court of the United States just two days ago. Again, shaking their fists in God's face, saying, we will not serve the natural law. We will not accept your will. And how many people who have been promoting this change? They say, in effect, what the Jews did when our Lord was condemned to death by Pilate. Our Lord was standing there with Pilate seated on his judgment seat before the people, and the people cried out, Away with this man! Crucify him! And Pilate said to them, Shall I crucify your king? And they said, We have no king but Caesar. Which is another way of saying, We have no king but our own will, our own desires. As St. Luke records the people saying, we will not have this man reign over us. And how many people say that today? I don't want, they say, Jesus in my life. I might pay him lip service, but I don't want his laws. Sadly again, the majority of men, if not in word, at least in action, that is what they say. And that is why devotion to the Sacred Heart, reparation, the reparation of loving hearts who love Jesus, who honor Him, who are striving to obey His commandments, that is why this loving atonement, this reparation, is so much needed today. To make up to our Lord, to give Him the love that He craves that is denied Him by so many. Let us make atonement. Let us love our Lord and let us say proudly, I will have this man reign over me. Dear Jesus, thy kingdom come. Thou art my king and I wish to be thy loyal subject. May thy sacred heart reign, dear Jesus, in our lives, in our parish, in our families, and one day throughout the world in society. May that rain come, and may we all live to see it one day. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.